Hey everyone, it's Dave here. Hope you're okay. I thought I'd make a video on this Sunday morning. I spent uh, much of last night pondering the fact that in my mind it's pretty clear that the experience of liberty and freedom uh, and a, a healthy, thriving society, caring society, is behind us for a very, very, very long time perhaps permanently. The last few months has, as I've said on many occasions, has utterly shocked me and horrified me. And as I've said on many occasions, I have utter disdain for the government. I think the media has got blood on its hands. But what's really shocked me is the, the behavior of the public. Hermann Goering, uh, who was a, if you don't know, a very prominent Nazi under Adolf Hitler, was asked in the 1945 Nuremberg trials, how were you able to make the German people do what they did? And he answered, very simple. All you need to do is make people slaves to fear, and then you can make them do anything you want them to do. Now I did a video earlier in the summer, about July I think it was, around uh, a comparison between what's going on now and what happened in uh, 1930s and 1940s Germany under the Nazis. And at the time I was uncomfortable doing that video because it was a very, very stark comparison. And it did make me feel uncomfortable. but. What I was seeing with my very, very eyes was that people's, the same trait, traits and trends and parallels were there, creating a common enemy, the Jew, coronavirus, uh, and then create propaganda around it. And the propaganda this time has been even more pronounced than it was under the Nazi, simply because there's more tools of propaganda available at the government's and media's disposal. And then hammer home the message relentlessly until you get people to change their behavior once the fear has set in. And I look back at that video now and think, I'm glad I made that video because the more I think about it, the more I think that yes, we have, uh, we have in the space of a few months created a society that is warped, that is morally depraved, that has regressed to such a degree it is unfathomable and, uh, and unbelievable to me. I have made videos previously about how I, uh, in the past few years that I've seen worrying signs and that perhaps a, a, a trigger was needed in order for this society to sh truly show where it was, what it was and how it really didn't understand itself or have any, any cut where the causes to fight for. And, this coronavirus um, pandemic or non-pandemic was it. The For those of us who've had our minds open to this for a long time, and I just want to say, and at this point I was brainwashed at the start as well. I was absolutely terrified at one point until I took a step back and, uh, and questioned, started questioning things and realised really what was going on. For those of us anyway who have been questioning for a number of months now, it's clear that whether, it, whether you believe the virus exists or not, I happen to believe that it does exist. However, I'm not going to label people who say that it doesn't a conspiracy theorist because nothing in this world surprises me any longer. And it wouldn't surprise me if one day we found out that this was a whole a fabrication and that the people who were dying were not dying of, uh, of, uh, of COVID, but were dying of something else. Anyway, I'm not in that camp. I do believe it was a threat. However, it was patently clear, and it's certainly patently clear now, that there is an alternative, many alternative ways to deal with it without the draconian and horrifying consequences and effects that it's had on society. The, the mere concept of lockdowns and of mask wearing, those two things, let alone the, 
the changes to people's behaviour. Grandparents too scared to see the grand their grandkids. People obeying government regulations and, and laws saying that households can't mix, that you can't go and visit your mum and dad. People obeying those, re those regulations. The reach of the government is now into the home for the first time, I think, ever. In this, certainly in this country, the government has invaded people's minds. It has changed their moral compasses. It's, it's created versions of people who, if they were able to look at what they're doing now and the behaviours they're demonstrating now, a year ago, they would have thought it not possible. They wouldn't have recognised themselves. And the mask wearing. What's that all about? This is a lockdown. It's the most incredibly insane idea. Locking down whole countries, locking down the whole world, two thirds of the world. Just as that was the most insane idea, with, with some honourable and notable exceptions, insane idea. So is the wearing of masks. Why are we doing it? Why are people doing it? There is no proof whatsoever. Yeah, are people asking the questions? Don't ask where are people asking the questions? Why are we seeing rising coronavirus infection rates in Europe, including the UK, despite the use of widespread use of masks? Spain, Italy, France, where the the uh, the masks mask wearing is mandated outside as it will be here soon why 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 are we seeing that why 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 have the public unquestioningly to mainly unquestioningly embrace the wearing of masks when the proof that it slows or stops or reduces the spread of viruses simply doesn't exist evidence exists that it does evidence exists that it doesn't and for anyone who wants to, to know, the, the WHO changed their guidance purely based on political lobbying. And there are many, many uh, scientists, journals and studies and research that have been done that you will not see in the mainstream media that argue against lockdowns, against mask wearing, against social distancing even. These arguments have never been represented in the mainstream media from the very, very start. And too many people have not questioned it themselves. And now what do I see? I see people, I see teenagers, people in their 20s and 30s, voluntarily subjugating themselves further by wearing masks in the fresh air. Even around here where I live, actually out in the country, I go for walks out in the country and I see people in the fresh air wearing masks, looking terrified like everybody else wearing a mask does. Terrified and miserable and just like a rabbit in the headlights. Yeah, here we are. These backwards behaviours have been embraced. Our liberties have been taken away to such a degree now. And they will not come back. And it's a sad, it's a, it's a, a sad time. It's certainly a sad time for me because I, I guess I rather naively believed as well that certainly socialism would never exist in the UK, will never exist in a way that uh, is able to exert its filthy, dirty, poisonous, evil influence on society. Yeah, make no mistake, what we have now as a result of people's acquiescence and acceptance, we have, as bizarre as it sounds, socialism under conservative, uh, conservative majority government. And for anyone who's an advocate of socialism, I think you've got your proof now about what it's doing to society, how it makes society worse, how it makes people turn on each other, how it takes liberties away and how it ultimately, how it leads to economic collapse, which is where we're going hunger, job losses, 
a flight of capital away from the individual to government and banks and ultimately death on a large scale. It's the lack of, real lack of care I think that people seem to have with their utter myopia and obsession regarding Covid. They're either not aware or they've forgotten or they choose to ignore what else is going on. I've talked about this so many times. The children, the effect on the children who will not have anywhere near the same freedoms. In fact, they will probably be completely subjugated now that we did, let alone the debt that we've saddled them with. I mean, how dare we use, that is their inheritance, that is. What if they need their own, what if they have their own economic issue, emergency to deal with? Where's the money gonna be? But it won't exist. What about the, the situation in care homes again now? What about the fact that if a, if, a, if a child is in hospital, seriously ill, that the child can't have both of its parents there? It's absolutely disgusting. What about all the cancer treatments that haven't been taking place? What about the fact that healthcare services have been removed? That you can't get a GP's appointment, you can't get a dentist appointment, routine appointments. What about the fact that so many people have lost jobs, so many people who've built up businesses from the ground, taking a risk? But no, sadly, I think there's a section of society that I've said this before. If you've got a job, if you've got a stable income, you're still getting paid, you still pay off the mortgage, and you're happy to be to be a slave of the state, to be a puppet of the state. This probably isn't this probably isn't particularly traumatic time for you. But no. And going back. Going back to the Nazis. I think I've said this before. People like to think that if they were there, they would have been the ones hiding out Frank. They would have been the ones sheltering the Jews. They would have been the ones not complying with the tyrannical laws. I think we know the answer now though, don't we? I think we know the answer to that question. Honestly, the general public terrifies me. And sh I, I, it's shameful. It's absolutely shameful. Some other questions talking about money. Does anyone ever think, you know, where's, where is this money coming from? Where is all this money coming from to pay? For these bailouts, for these, these schemes that are being negotiated by local, local government and local mayors who are as corrupt as the ones in Westminster negotiating for people's freedom. It's disgusting. The furlough schemes, the business bailouts, where's all this money coming from? let alone the money that has been spent on this corrupt test and trace, the tens of billions of pounds that has been spent on that, that could have gone into childhood cancers, into studying for, study, maybe study about infectious diseases so that we can better educate ourselves. But no, spend instead on indoctrination advertising campaigns and a corrupt test and trace. And we talk about corruption, the level of corruption in this conservative government is absolutely astounding. I mean, I, expe I expect it from a conservative government. I certainly expect it from any government, a level of corruption, you will get corruption. But what's going on with this test and trace? I don't even get me started on the reliability of the test and trace. Rising infection numbers. Why are people voluntarily going to get tested? Why? If you don't need to be tested for your work, do not get tested. If people want to get their freedoms back, something else they need to stop doing. Stop going to get tested. They'll put you down as a positive test, regardless. Or you may have it and you will be a positive test, which will further inflate the narrative and further the cause of the corrupt media who are lying, who are spreading poison and propaganda and lies. Just in the same way that they're doing, it's my one beacon of hope that I'm going to talk about now. 
I've, did, I've done a video and I'll do another video about, about the US election. Trump has to win this election. For the freedom and the, the hope for the whole world, Trump has to win. He's the most important election in any country ever, this. If Trump doesn't win, God help us. Now, according to the mainstream media, Trump's not going to win because Biden is, has a commanding lead. However, this is the same media that has created the fear around COVID. And what they're doing, in my opinion, is lying again, spinning the reality. Because the reality, in my opinion, is very, very different to that is what is being portrayed by the BBC, CNN, Sky, all the rest of them. And Biden isn't winning. Trump is to a massive degree. And there could be a blowout in this election and a Trump landslide. Why are they doing it? I believe they're doing it to scare people into voting Democrat, particularly uh, minorities into voting Democrat, because Democrats have to have the minority vote to stand at any chance of winning. And the way that Trump's been represented in his four years as president as well, the way he's been tarnished, smeared, treated very, very unfairly over a presidency that has by and large been exceptionally successful. He has questions to answer over his handling of the COVID pan pandemic. I have no, uh, no uh, doubt about that. However, even that, it's not entirely his responsibility. It's more nuanced, it's more complicated than that. The way that the uh, US uh, political system works and the degree of autonomy that each state has and decision-making with regards to how they approached the pandemic was different in every state. Um, but I think what we're going to see, it's interesting when I talk to people about Trump. They're often not able to come up with any coherent reason why they hate him so much, which leads me to believe that people, most, a lot of people don't hate him. A lot of people admire him, but feel scared. Feel like they need to toe the party line. The same with, with Brexit, the same with voting Tory. You can't publicly admit these things yet when you go to cast your ballot you can then speak your mind because no one will know who you voted for and then you can tell people oh, i didn't vote for trump or i didn't vote for brexit yet the proof is there in the pudding isn't it which brings me to another another uh, observation that i have and i think i probably have talked about this as well is uh, on many occasions is the silent majority need to find their voice need to find their bravery and their courage if you believed in Brexit, tell people. If they get upset by it, so what? That's for them to deal with. If you like Trump, tell people. I like Trump. I believe in Brexit. I voted Conservative. I wish I would go back and scrap my ballot paper, put a big red line, well, pencil line through it. But I believe in Conservatism. You know, I believe in sovereignty. I believe in, in patriotism, family, business. Love of country. But it's another worrying, worrying trend, I think. The unwillingness of people to tell others what they really think because of the far left backlash. The far left who are absolutely hell bent on power so that they can carry out their malevolent aims which they are doing and which will be complete if Joe Biden and the Democrats win. That's the problem. The conversation isn't there because people are scared. And I, I don't for one moment, going back to the virus, don't doubt for one moment that there are people, probably older people who are still terrified with, with, with good reason. They've, they've been terrified into submission. I think most people aren't scared of the virus at all. I think, and I think a lot of people now have figured out what the likes of uh, me and a number of my friends have been saying for a number of months now. The ones of us who've been questioning it. I think people, are the, I think the penny's dropping that what's going on in reality isn't, isn't, correlating to what we've been told by the government and the media and I think that people are doing the following these laws and they're putting the masks on yet they don't believe that it's being done for the right reason yet they're still doing it 
That's what I think. I don't think people are scared of virus. And I don't for one second believe that we live in a society when I hear people say, I'm wearing a mask to protect other people. Oh, well, it's not like that. Our society isn't a caring society. People generally really don't care about other people that they don't know. That's just a convenient line to use to justify wearing a mask, to be in a state puppet, because that's what you are, a puppet of the state. You are advocating and endorsing Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, and his uh, band of corrupt politicians who are wreaking havoc on this country. That's what you're doing if you're wearing a mask. Unless you believe, if you genuinely do believe that you're doing the that you're doing the, the in putting a mask on that you're doing the right thing, then that's absolutely fine, no problem at all. But if you're going along with it in the full knowledge that it's wrong, well, that's a very different matter entirely, isn't it? Um, one last point as well. I'm hearing more and more and more people now pinning their hopes on this. Vaccine. The vaccine. The vaccine for the disease that has an exceptionally small death rate. Now, some facts about vaccines. Let's not even get into the ethics around this particular vaccine and the money that's being made off the back of it. But vaccines don't eliminate viruses. News. Is that news to you? Vaccines don't eliminate viruses. It's not the magic ticket, it's not the golden bullet that we're being told that it is. And people need to know this right now so that they can, I don't know they will, plot an alternative way to get us out of this mess, which is not to acquiesce rather than rely on a vaccine. I think a vaccine will come next year. I think a lot of people are going to make a lot of money out of it. I think there will be a mass advertising campaign uh, propaganda campaign to get the vaccine it'll be framed around uh, if you get this vaccine you're a good person because you're helping uh, you're helping people to um, protect themselves against coronavirus that's what it'll be so there'll be like everything else that'll be framed through a moralistic prism I think you'll have a large number of people who rush to get the vaccine you'll have a large number of people who won't want to get it including me and then what, what will happen then? I think we'll, the media will move away from a focus on COVID and towards a focus on, you can have some of your freedoms back if you have this vaccine. So immunity passports. So you certainly won't be allowed to leave the country unless you've had the COVID vaccine. And I think in time, you won't be allowed to work and be allowed to go into hospitality venues, pubs, restaurants, unless you've had the vaccine. So people will be pressurised and if they don't get the vaccine, they won't have any opportunities at all. So please really think about where this is going. It's not going to eliminate the disease. The disease will be here for centuries. I mean, please tell, please tell me that people are aware of that fact. Please tell me that. There's any smallpox that's been eliminated. There's any one. But really, I have a think around the morals and the ethics and the questions around this vaccine. Why is the government so desperate? Why are governments around the world so desperate to get a vaccine? What's in it for them? Is it about protecting the population and reducing the spread of COVID-19? Or is it about money, power and control and further eroding people's freedoms? As I've said all along, ask questions, it's not hard it's not hard and a message for those of you who are waking up or are fully woken up but are still following the rules stop doing it stop it the rules at this point at this look at this the rules and laws at this point still are not being enforced by any authority they're being policed by people themselves so all you have to do is stick two fingers up to them if you want or politely tell them to do one if you get challenged when i've been challenged I just say no to hand sanitizer. I say no hands. I tell a lie. Here's why telling a lie can be good sometimes. Tell a white lie. I say my hands are allergic to hand sanitizer. Well, they are. I do get very dry hands. Maybe they are. So I don't do that. I do have asthma, so I have a justifiable reason not to wear a mask. 
but I wouldn't wear one anyway. Just say you've got anxiety, say you've got asthma. Don't wear one, it's easy. People can't say anything. And if they don't let you in, just go to another shop. Stop complying. If you want to go and visit friends and family, if you haven't seen your grandkids for months, go see them before it's too late. If you want to go and have a cup of coffee with your mum and dad, go and have a beer with your mate, do it. How dare the government? How dare the government tell you who you can go to see, who you can have in your own house, who you can associate with, and where you can go? How dare they? Think about how wrong this is. And I'm going to finish up. At some point, and it's coming very, very soon now, everybody is going to have to pick a side here. Are you on the side of freedom and decency and opportunity and democracy and good? Or are you on the side of the government? What kind of future do you want? Ask and then answer those questions. And let's find out who people are. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.